So now the J Dubs are allowing beards within the organization. <laughs> they done already told their publishers that what was it about counting time or something that they weren't weren't required to turn in field service time. Something of that nature. Now they're allowing beards or to uh, their one's own discretion. <laughs> oh, man. That, that organization is suffering, boy. What's next? Y'all going to allow y'all followers to accept blood transfusions? Be able to interact with this fellowship ones. <laughs> oh man, it's I've just been seeing the reports and different posts on various ex Jehovah's Witness forums, and I'm like, wow, they're really dumbing down their standards trying to keep members. Because we've all know over the past five to ten years, their numbers have been seriously dwindling. Why do you think they've been closing down a bunch of different kingdom halls? They just recently closed down one not too far from me. And this was actually a kingdom hall that I visited quite frequently during my J-Dub era. Yeah, they still got the J-Dub org sign up there, but it's a daycare now. And all over the U.S., Kingdom Halls are being sold. Congregations are merging. Like it's dwindling and it's dwindling fast, so there is, it's all desperation moves. Now the followers can grow their own beards. Like I said, next they're going to allow blood transfusions. And they'll just use it under the guise of new light so that people that then lost loved ones before due to the refusal of blood transfusions can't sue the organization. So they'll just be like, well, this is new light, whatever, whatever. Like I said, don't be surprised if you word comes that oh witnesses are allowed to communicate with this fellowship ones. Me personally, if any, I mean I am my baptism or no. But that still falls under the guise of one who turned to the dark side. And it would still be grounds for fellow witnesses to shun me, but they can't shun me because I didn't already shun them. But if any of them were to try to reach out, I'd be like, nah. Because if the governing body disguised themselves as Jehovah, didn't bring this news to you, you would have never reached out. And had I tried to reach out to you beforehand, you would have tried to shun me. So, nope. Keep that same energy. Keep that same energy. It's just wild. I don't even really see Witnesses going door to door no more. Whenever I see them out and about, they're always posted up with a cart. I guess that's a new form of witnessing. Like I said, had that cart witnesses shit been around when I was in, I could have full time pioneered easy. <laughs> easy. A lot of us could have. If you could just sit at a cart for four or five hours a day, just enjoying the fresh breeze, the
fresh air, getting that good sunlight. <laughs> Man, but I, I wonder what's next for the dwindling cult. <laughs> next, oh, you allowed to watch R-rated movies and listen to rap music. All the witnesses have been doing that since long ago. Shoot, when I was in, we used to go see R-rated movies and listen to rap music. So that's not a new one to the sun. You, you see a lot of witnesses are on social media. I don't know how many times I came across active witnesses <clears throat> on Facebook, Instagram, just different forms of social media. A lot of them try to reach out to me, but like, nah, because I know they're asking me, when am I, am I am I coming back or trying to use me to count time? I mean, they do that. And there was one time, uh, is a witness. He's a fellow Sixers season ticket holder. So we run into each other at Sixer games and sees a ticket holder events, we might exchange a couple words, like, hey, how you doing, whatever. Whatever little conversation we do have is all is always basketball related, pertaining to the team, nothing else. But he's on my friend list. At one time, I had commented on a post or something and you know how you get the notifications if you comment on something. Every time somebody else comments, you get the notifications. So I see different witnesses comment. And it's like the the post was sports related. It was about the Eagles. So you know a lot of witnesses are diehard sports fanatics. And I was looking at a lot of the active witnesses that were commenting. And in their profile picture, a lot of them had beards. And I'm like... Wait, are y'all still going to the hall or were you, did you take a little break? Were you on vacation or something? Because I know a lot of witnesses, they might go away on vacation for like a week, maybe. And while they're away, they don't go to no meetings. They, they're they on vacation. They're vacationing from everything, even their Lord and Slavior. <clears throat> now, I know... And my congregation, West Park, that was frowned upon. Even when you went away, <clears throat> you were supposed to dedicate your entire trip to Jehovah. You were supposed to still attend all your meetings, do all your studying, your daily texts, whatever. But also knew a lot of witnesses, when they went away, they went away. They took a break. And some of them, the guys would use that time to let their facial hair grow in. So I'm thinking, damn, that... <clears throat> Are some of y'all inactive or did y'all take a little break? You know, some guys, you could go two or three days without shaving and you could have damn near a full grown beard. So that's what I'm thinking. And then not too long after I see the uh, new changes about brothers being allowed to grow beards. And I'm like, ah, <clears throat> that's probably another reason why they change it. Because a lot of brothers... See, with the organization dwindling down and numbers, they're not being so strict like how they used to. Because <clears throat> when I was coming up in the congregation, if you had any type of facial hair besides a mustache, you weren't allowed to have any responsibilities in the congregation. and You weren't viewed as an exemplary brother. But, you know, it, today, you know, they're not coming down so hard because they desperately need brothers. So they like, oh, brother such and such, oh, you can grow your beard. Is that your own discretion? Matter of fact, because, you know, the governing body, they have to control everything. So they got to make it like they are the ones that gave the green light to let brothers grow their beard. But for what I've been seeing a lot of different J-dubs 
have been growing their facial hair. It wasn't too long ago I seen a guy that I used to play ball with and I knew he was still in the witnesses because he was at the cart, at his cart, like with the watchtowers and shit at the cart, just sitting there posted up with another older brother. He had a goatee longer than mine. Like I had to take a, like do a triple check and be like, damn dog, like I ain't speak to him or nothing, but I had to look a couple times like, damn dog, your goatee longer than mine. But you know what I mean? My opinion is this doesn't surprise me. Like I said, next they're going to allow blood transfusions. Fellow witnesses, well, current witnesses will be allowed to socialize with this fellowship ones. Shit, next you'll be able to use tobacco <laughs> at your own discretion. Shit, don't be surprised a few years down the line. Oh, you're allowed to fornicate under your own discretion, but it must be a fellow witness that you're fornicating with. <laughs> oh, man. Hmm. Fornicating. <laughs> like I said, this. Oh, man. It's just like, it, they're just wild. New light. Oh, new light. Brothers are allowed to grow their beards out of their own discretion. But when you look at the old illustrations of so-called followers from back in Jesus day, Noah's day, Abraham and all them cats, they all have full grown beards. But when I was coming up, it was forbidden to have a beard or else you wouldn't be considered exemplary and you wouldn't be able to have any privileges in the congregation. Man, the first thing I did when I started rebelling, when I knew I was on my way out the door, I let my goatee grow. I mean, I always kept a mustache. I was never into a beard. I've always been a goatee kind of guy. You know. But that was the first thing I did was let my goatee grow out now. Brothers is walking around at the assemblies ministerial servants and elders with goatees and full grown beards. My, 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 how the tide has changed. That's some wild shit, boy. <laughs> it's like, that, that's all I've been seeing, but hey, it is what it is. Congre Kingdom Halls are being sold. <clears throat> I heard recently that Three congregations in Philadelphia had merged. They was all going to the same kingdom hall anyway. But attendance that got so bad that three different congregations merged. Before they merged, they was only averaging like 50 some individuals for attendance. That's wild. Because when I was in West Park... We averaged a hundred, maybe a hundred some people. And when the circuit overseer came, it would be like 120 to 130. And the memorial, shh, you could forget it. It'd be like three, four hundred people in the building. But you know, that's Bible studies and family members, people that won't come to the Kingdom Hall any other time, but for those special occasions. But yeah, even on a the plain theocratic ministry school service meeting type of night we was averaging between 100 and 110 even when I went to the northeast congregation the year and a half I was there we was averaging about that and book study was always 20 to 25 maybe 30 people depending on the size of the group so when I heard that the congregations was only averaging 50 some publishers, 60 to 75 on a good day. I was like, damn, like it's really dwindling for real. And see, it's only maybe one or two people, really one person that I talked to, my homie that I did a video on 
a few months back, but I haven't really talked to her since then. <laughs> I'm thinking about reaching out to her. You know, I usually talk to her like maybe every few months or so, and she'll kind of keep me up on certain individuals we might know, but last I talked to her, she was going to a congregation out in the suburbs somewhere amongst people that I never had any dealings with or never even knew. And a lot of the mutual people that we did know, she's not in touch with a lot of them. So it's like, but anyway, I don't go searching for people that I've dealt with in the past from my J-Dub era. Do you think, I wonder what such and such is doing because we were close at one time, sure, but looking to reach out to him, nah. If it ever happens where we just happen to run into one another and they're not on that brainwashed rhetoric, then cool. But other than that, I'm not checking for any of them. I know a couple of my subscribers have reached out to me it was asking me did I ever think about reaching out to like my uncle she for my cousin she for my homies Nad Raj and them and I'm like nah I'm not and the thing is I know where they're at that's the thing I know cousin and the homie they were up there in Pittsburgh you know I know my uncle they moved out to the west coast you know, my cousin, other cousin, Scrappy D, he's still in Philly, whatever. But I'm not checking for nobody. I'm on my own time. It's all, it's all about Hawk Nation, being queen, continue soaring in high flight. I mean, I'm in the XJ-Dub groups. So that's how I know of whatever changes are going on. <clears throat> and a few individuals that... I helped aid out of the uh, quote unquote truth. Whenever we talk or whatever, it's not about the J dubs. It's about whatever we currently have going on in our lives. Like my homie Gigi, I talked to him a couple of weeks ago. He's doing his thing with his big brother program, mentoring the younger generation of males coming up. He's doing a Great job with that. Repping our Winfield neighborhood proudly. I salute him for that. You have my other OG, Willie. He's doing this thing. He has his own security firm. You know, and he keeps asking me, when am I going to grab a German Shepherd? Because he breeds dumb. I'm like, I want a German Shepherd Husky. I keep telling him. I want a couple of them. I'm going to name them Champion G's. After Queenie's grandparents slash parents because they're the ones that raised her. But anyway, whenever we talk, it's always about what we currently have going on in our lives. Every once in a while, we might reminisce on something from back then, but it's never too often. It's always about what we currently have going on and looking to the future, but... Anyway, it's just, I wonder what the governing body disguising themselves as Jehovah. I wonder what those old farts got planned next. <laughs> you know, Tony Morris, I'm hearing that he's no longer a part of the governing body. He was caught going on a, uh, <clears throat> a liquor binge. <laughs> you know, you know, them old motherfuckers be getting their drink on. Probably be getting this smoke on too. I wouldn't be surprised. And the thing is, you would be surprised, especially today, how many J dubs are smoking weed. Because back when I was in, it was a good number of us that was smoking weed. It was a good number of us. You know, and some of them were ministerial servants. Shit, it was even a couple of elders that talked here and there. But anyway, this was a little Hawks talking squawk before I wrap up. Because I have some business to tend to. 
Then I'm going to get back to finishing up some projects later on. Uh, I think that's about it. But shout out to all my fellow XJ Dub slash apostates. <laughs> We're sitting back laughing at the shit show of the J Dub org. <laughs> Dumb, dumbing down all their rules. And the, another thing, a lot of this dumbing down, they're trying to, not only are they trying to keep members in, they're trying to draw people back. Those that they need to fade it away, bend its fellowship, disassociated, or ones like me that had their baptism and all. Having their baptism and all, that's a rare, rare case. In one of my first videos, I explained why, how I had my baptism and all. The brother baptized me the wrong way. They told me that it doesn't matter because I wasn't going to last anyway. So I used all that to have my shit and all. But the governing body, too, they think they're slick. They're doing this. They're trying to draw people back in. But, oh, you can never bear. And like I said, don't be surprised. I was joking. I was half joking when I said this. I made a post in the a couple of the XJ Dub forums about next them allowing blood transfusions and being allowed to socialize with this fellowship ones. They're trying to not only keep people in, but draw people back that they strayed away. But just be on the lookout. There's going to be more and more dumbing down and rule changes coming. And cats like me will definitely be reporting on that but anyway this was a little hawks talking squawk be sure to subscribe to the channel check out the other content and stay tuned for more content hawk out